Welcome to the 2020 ASME Annual Awards Event, where we celebrate engineering achievement and those who exemplify our profession and are impacting lives around the world. Here is your host, seven-time Emmy Award winner, Roy Firestone. Good evening and welcome to the 2020 ASME Annual Awards event. I'm Roy Firestone. I'll be your host for this evening's program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tonight we pay tribute to the careers and accomplishments of some of the world's outstanding engineers, innovators, scholars, and pioneers, those who have used their knowledge and technical abilities to advance engineering for the benefit of humanity. Before we continue, though, I would like to take a moment to thank the ASMA Committee on Honors for making this year's award selections. Yes, you should applaud. Absolutely. Thank you to ASME President Brian Erler, ASME Executive Director and CEO Tom Costabile, and to the ASME Board of Governors for their support throughout the selection process. Thank you to immediate past president Richard Laudnett, during whose term tonight awards recipients were selected. And we are also very grateful for the support of the ASME Foundation, the Philanthropy Committee, and the ASME Foundation Board. The ASME Foundation continues to make life-changing investments in the lives of engineering students throughout the world. Eurydice Kanimba, one of the individuals who recently earned her PhD in mechanical engineering at Virginia Tech, and it was the ASME Foundation, that provided her with three scholarships to assist her in funding her engineering education. As you watch the video, consider this. Without support from the ASME Foundation, this extraordinary talent might have never been discovered. Exactly the kind of vision and creativity, I think, that the world really needs now to make it a better place for everyone. Here is Yuri's story. My name is Eurydice Kanimba, PhD. To me, that P stands for problem solver because I'm a mechanical engineer. Mechanical engineering involves combining physics law with your imagination and try to come up with a really finished product. I really do enjoy thinking about an object or thinking about a design and analyzing how you can make that a reality. I was born in 1993, and that was a year before the tragic genocide that happened in my country. That also sort of molded my path into wanting to be better for my family. We faced a lot of tragedy. It's like we have a mission to accomplish, and that really uh, kept me going. Coming here, it was a little hard at first. Navigating, getting used to actually speaking a new language. There was a semi student chapter and I went to the meeting. I just took it as an opportunity for me to actually uh, start forming relations and start being involved in uh, an organization or a community that is willing to support. If you immerse yourself within it, you can reach your destination. My second year, I signed up to be the secretary and then moved on from secretary to vice president to then president in my uh, senior year. I was awarded the Willis Thompson Scholarship in 2013. My parents, at the time, they were supporting five of us, so it was a lot on their shoulder. And when I told them that I was awarded that, they, they were really amazed and very thankful for sure. ASME just came at the right time. After that, I moved on and I was awarded two more ASME scholarship in graduate school. And that keeps you going, knowing that there's actually an organization that cares about what you're doing and the work that you put in. It also provides you more, um, more courage or more, you feel much more hopeful. My research involved the modeling of bio-inspired uh, structures. Uh, one of them is uh, called the cuttle bone, which is the inner shell of the cuttlefish. The cuttlefish uh, lives at the bottom of the sea where the pressure are pretty high, close to 600 psi. 
The cattle bone has very good mechanical properties and it can sustain a lot of compressive strength. The exterior of a spacecraft system experience a huge amount of pressure during travel because there's friction between the air and the, um, the exterior when it's re-entering into the atmosphere. Now you really need a structure that can be able to maintain the form and the shape of the spacecraft. So the cattle bone has a very high compressive strength. This is a 3D printed version of it. With a computer model of this, you can do a lot of modeling analysis with different type of material. Last time when we met, mm -hmm. I asked you to create a code book mm -hmm. for the studies. I believe that we need diverse thought, especially in engineering. There is more than one way of solving an engineering problem. Being a girl from Rwanda, I grew up with totally different perspective than someone here. It really gives me joy by giving back because I now know that the process that I've gone through um, can sort of be an example for others. I can share my story so a young girl who is starting off engineering can see, oh, it's possible. A lot of people think that engineers are lab rat or glued to their computers. You'll be surprised to know that I've actually won a silver medal uh, nationwide in ping pong. My name is Eurydice Kaliba and I am a rocket scientist. Today, more than ever, the world needs new ways to make our lives safer and healthier and more sustainable. It'll be engineers who bring this world and the world-changing innovations to life. Learn how you can impact the life of aspiring engineers like Yuri Kanimba with your donation to the ASME Foundation. Please visit www.asmefoundation.org. And thank you for your generous contributions. Okay, applause. Thank you. Thank you. Now, in addition to the award presentations, we've got two extremely talented individuals who will be performing for you this evening. First, all the way from Cork, Ireland, 15-year-old recording artist and musical sensation Ali Sherlock. And also tonight, we have another very talented 15-year-old from Toronto, Canada. His name is Jeffrey Lee. So, it's going to be a lot of fun. Stick around for what will undoubtedly be an unforgettable evening of engineering and celebration, entertainment, and lots of inspiration, too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tonight, we're here amongst some truly amazing people who have done some incredible things through engineering to make our world a better place. But before we continue with our program, I'd like to take you back to the summer of 1969 and a story that I believe is going to truly resonate with this audience of engineers and innovators and technology leaders. And even you baseball fans who might remember the name Nate Colbert. This was a piece I did very recently. Watch this. In 1969, there was a ball player who played for the San Diego Padres. He's a pretty good player, but not a spectacular player. His name was Nate Colbert. Now, Nate Colbert was a veteran. He struggled here and there, but he had a couple of good years, but never anything special. He was playing a doubleheader in Atlanta in 19, July of 1969. The first time at bat, he hits a home run. Second time at bat, he doubles to right field. Third time at bat, another home run. Fourth time at bat, another home run. This guy had the career day of his life. Couldn't believe it. Now this is a doubleheader, and he's in Atlanta on the road. The second game of the doubleheader starts, they introduce his name. Number nine, Nate Colbert. Folks, the place went berserk. They started cheering, they started stomping, they had people with tears in their eyes, they had people holding their children aloft, people were jumping up and down, to such a point that Nate Colbert couldn't get up and hit. He was overcome with emotion. So he can't hit, he's bent over, and the guy who's on deck walks up and says, Nate, what's your problem? Get up there and hit. He says, get up there and hit. 
listen to this crowd. The crowd's still going nuts. They're cheering and stomping, and people are going out of their minds. He says, I just had the career day of my life. I had three home runs and a double on the road in Atlanta, and listen to this crowd. They are saying, we love you, Nate. No one will ever have a better day than you. He says, the guy was sitting next to him, he goes, what are you talking about? Would you take a look at the scoreboard? He looks up at, at the scoreboard and says, congratulations, we've landed a man on the moon. Remember your humility. Now for the presentation of our first award. The ASME Soshiro Honda Medal recognizes an individual for an outstanding achievement or a series of significant engineering contributions in developing improvements in the field of personal transportation. This year's recipient is Dr. Asad Madni. Our Shashiro Honda Medal awardee is recognized for his significant engineering contributions in the fields of personal and commercial transportation. Dr. Asad Madni is an internationally recognized authority in intelligent sensors, system design, and signal processing. Currently distinguished adjunct professor and distinguished scientist in the electrical and computer engineering department at UCLA. His breakthrough gyro chip was the first microelectromechanical based gyroscope and inertial measurement unit for aerospace and automotive safety. The electronic stability control and rollover prevention systems, lane change assist, steering and wheel speed detection, so prevalent in today's passenger vehicles can be attributed to his work. After his retirement from Sistron Donner Corporation, where he eventually served as Chairman, President and CEO, Dr. Modney served as President, Chief Operating Officer and Chief Technology Officer of BEI Technologies, where he led the development and commercialization of intelligent microsensors for the aerospace, military, commercial and transportation industries. In 2011, he was elected to the U.S. National Academy of Engineering for his contributions to aerospace and automotive safety. For these achievements and more, Dr. Asad M. Modney is awarded ASME's Shoshiro Honda Medal. Ladies and gentlemen, I offer you my warmest greetings. I'm honored, humbled, and grateful to ASME for conferring this most prestigious honor upon me. As I reflect upon my 50 plus year career in engineering, I cannot recollect any other period where we have been faced with such extraordinary challenges resulting from an unprecedented global pandemic, political polarization, and social unrest in our nation. This compels us to look deep within ourselves and utilize our moral compass technological prowess and human understanding in transforming these challenges into opportunities for a safer and a more just society. This also dictates that engineers will have to be trained in new ways so that they're able to address the challenges of the world that we will be emerging into. This is quite a challenge. However, I'm confident that with the continued leadership of ASME, supported by our academic institutions, in training our next generation of engineers, they will be prepared to confront these challenges with excitement and creativity. Ladies and gentlemen, I accept this honor with the greatest enthusiasm and utmost humility that is exceeded only by my deepest gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much and congratulations, Dr. Modney. Our next award is the Pi Tau Sigma Gold Medal given to an individual for outstanding achievement in mechanical engineering within 10 years following graduation with a baccalaureate degree in mechanical engineering or related field. And that award is bestowed for overall outstanding achievement in the mechanical engineering field during the set period. So let's meet this year's recipient, Dr. David Kwabi. The Pi Tau Sigma Medal 
recognizes outstanding achievement in the field of mechanical engineering by an individual within 10 years of graduation with a baccalaureate degree in mechanical engineering or a related field. Meet Dr. David G. Kwabi. Since earning his PhD in mechanical engineering and postdoctoral fellowship at Harvard, he's already furthered our understanding of chemical and morphological transformations in non-aqueous metal air batteries and the design and analysis of aqueous organic redox flow batteries. As an assistant professor in the mechanical engineering department at the University of Michigan, Dr. Kwabi leads a research group investigating the interplay between electrochemical charge transfer reactions and bulk phase transformations. Although primarily motivated by a variety of energy storage applications like metal, air, sulfur, and redox flow batteries, his work bears relevance to molecular separation, including CO2 capture and photocatalytic processes. Dr. Kwabi believes that direct air capture of CO2 could become one of the key players in enabling effective carbon capture, utilization, and or sequestration for climate change mitigation. ASME gladly presents the Pi Tau Sigma Gold Medal to Dr. David Kwabi. I'd like to thank the ASME for the very kind introduction for this award and for the opportunity to express my gratitude virtually. The Research in Energy Storage and Conversion this award recognizes would not have been possible without the support and cooperation of a whole host of colleagues and mentors. And so I'd especially like to thank Willie Sowayejo, who was my undergraduate mentor, Yang Xiaohorn, who was my PhD thesis advisor, and Mike Aziz, who was my supervisor during my postdoc. They, in addition to many other colleagues, taught me how to apply care and rigor to my work and to see the potential for scientific innovation to make a positive impact on the world. The ASME represents a group of talented and motivated engineers who are on the forefront of solving urgent societal problems in energy, health, and environment. I'm proud to be a part of this community and look forward to future engagement and collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and congratulations to you, Dr. Kwabi. Well, before we present our next award, I'm happy to introduce a very gifted young singer, Jeffrey Lee, 15-year-old Canadian, who at the age of 13 made his singing debut with a performance on the NBC hit television show, America's Got Talent. The year was 2018. His auditions received more than 27 million views on YouTube. In 2016, he performed on NBC's TV show, Little Big Shots, produced by Ellen DeGeneres and Steve Harvey. And his rendition of the song, You Raise Me Up, has gained over 124 million views on Facebook and over 50 million views on YouTube. And the numbers continue to rise. He's a very talented young performer with a great, bright future. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the sensational Jeffrey Lee. Walk 
comes from me seems I am strong when I am on your shoulders You raise me up to more than I can be You raise me up so I can stand on now On stormy seas, I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. You raise me up. To more than I can be. Jeffrey, thank you so much for that song, and we wish you all the best. You're just terrific. It's great, great to hear you. Well, the M. Eugene Merchant Manufacturing Medal was established in 1986 by ASME and SME, the Society of Manufacturing Engineers, and is presented to honor an exceptional individual who's had significant influence and responsibility for improving the productivity and efficiency of manufacturing operations. And this year's recipient is Dr. Krista Morthy, Subramanian. The M. Eugene Merchant Manufacturing Medal of ASME SME honors an individual who has played a significant role in improving productivity and efficiency in manufacturing. With a long career in real world manufacturing, Dr. Krishnamurthy Subramanian's contributions are rich with research, product development, process innovations, and technical publishing. From Ford Motor Company to International Harvester, Norton Abrasives, and his role as Director of Surface Preparation Technology at St. Gobain, his work is based on sound scientific understanding powered by innovation. Together with his teams, he has expanded the role of traditional manufacturing processes, like grinding, to meet the needs in new and emerging markets with applications ranging from aerospace to high-tech manufacturing. With an approach that combines science, engineering, and management skills in the service of global competitiveness, he shares his expertise and passion as an advisor, consultant, and mentor. Dr. Subramanian is the founder and president of STEMS Institute USA and an ASME and SME fellow. He has served on multiple committees and is a past chair of the ASME Manufacturing Engineering Division. He's authored two books, is a prodigious publisher and presenter, and has received numerous awards spanning from his early career to the present. ASME and SME are proud to present the M. Eugene Merchant Manufacturing Medal to Dr. Krishnamurthy Subramanian. In the field of manufacturing, there are countless physical processes like grinding, machining, etc. They grow their roots through research, become visible through industrial use, and yield fruits measured as commercial results. Merchant Medal is an honor that recognizes the contribution to this combination of efforts and outcome in manufacturing. I'm genuinely honored and humbled to receive this recognition and the award. Thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations to Dr. Subramanian. The Ralph Coates Rowe Medal was established in 1972 to recognize outstanding contributions towards a better public understanding and appreciation of the engineer's worth to contemporary society. The medal was endowed by Burns and Rowe Incorporated, the company founded by Ralph Coates Rowe. This year's Rowe Medal is awarded to Dr. William Hammack.
ASME's Ralph Coates Rowe Medal recognizes significant contribution to the public understanding and appreciation of the engineer's worth to society. Dr. William Hammock's use of internet-delivered media both educates and entertains, inspiring the next generation of engineers and providing easy-to-understand insights into the ways science and engineering affect the world around us. His YouTube channel, with nearly 900,000 subscribers and almost 50 million views, emphasizes engineering as a creative profession, using technically accurate language that is both clear and accessible in ways that educate and entertain. Dr. Hammock is the William H. and Janet G. Lichen Professor at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign in the Department of Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering. His work has received nine national awards from a diverse group of scientific, engineering, and journalistic societies, including the Council of Scientific Presidents, the American Institute of Physics, ASME, and the National Society of Science Writers. He's also earned rave reviews. Make Magazine says his short films and videos, quote, should be held up as models of how to present complex technical information. Science Magazine noted his ability to, quote, rhapsodize over the clever design of a soda can or a scotch tape dispenser. Wired calls his videos, quote, dazzling. For his contributions to the public understanding and appreciation of engineers and their impact on society, we are pleased to present the Ralph Coates Rowe Medal to Dr. William S. Hammack. I am greatly honored to receive the Ralph Coates Rowe Medal for my work talking to the public about engineers and engineering because some of the previous recipients are my heroes in communicating engineering. And I'm especially thrilled to be recognized by the American Society of Mechanical Engineers because many of my videos, in fact the most popular ones, feature the work of mechanical engineers, soda cans, plastic injection molding, MIMS accelerometers, and so on. These products touch people's lives in the most direct way and so bring home to a viewer the importance and ubiquity of engineering in their lives. So your work helps in the task of demonstrating that engineering is a supremely creative human endeavor. And it is only by demonstrating this again and again that we will attract the next generation of engineers who create the devices, products, and systems to solve whatever in the future imperils our world. Congratulations, Dr. Hammock. Our next award will be presented by the president of ASME. Please join me in welcoming Brian Erler. Thank you, Roy. The Richard J. Goldstein Energy Lecture Award, established in 2019, recognizes pioneering contribution to the frontiers of energy, leading to breakthroughs in existing technology, to new application, or new areas of engineering endeavor or leading to policy initiative. Let's meet this year's recipient, Dr. James Touchard. The Richard J. Goldstein Energy Lecture Award recognizes pioneering contributions to the frontiers of energy. Indefatigable from the start, this year's recipient earned his Ph.D. in electrical engineering while working full-time as a research scientist at the Applied Research Laboratory at the University of Texas at Austin. Dr. James J. Trouchard is credited with pioneering technologies for computer-based test systems for the U.S. Navy's sonar transducers and beamformers, devices used to monitor underwater noise by converting sound waves into an electrical signal. Computer-based test equipment would become his vision when founding National Instruments in 1976. The company's LabVIEW graphical development software revolutionized the way engineers and scientists work. Since retiring after 40 years as CEO, he's been active in supporting the next generation of engineers through programs like FIRST and Hands-On Learning Labs. 
He is also currently sponsoring a study with the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine on clean, safe, and affordable nuclear power. For Dr. Trichard, there's always time to pursue other passions like gardening. He wrote a book about his garden, which he donates to botanical gardens in his home state of Texas. Join us in congratulating Dr. James Trichard as this year's Richard J. Goldstein Energy Lecture Award recipient. I'd like to thank ASME for honoring me with the Richard J. Goldstein Energy Lecture Award. Mechanical engineering plays a key role in society, and I've supported uh, measurement technology for mechanical engineers over the last four decades. Mechanical engineers have been working on energy uh, generation from clean sources such as wind, solar, even fission and fusion. Mechanical engineers have been helping support the FIRST Robotics program uh, in grade schools, middle schools, and high schools for the next generation of engineers. Looking to the future, I'm supporting a study with the National Academies for Clean, Safe, Affordable Nuclear Power. Again, I would like to thank the ASME. Thank you, President Erler, and congratulations to you, Dr. Trouchard. Our next performer began her musical career on the streets of Dublin, Ireland, when she was just nine years old, drawing crowds of Grafton Street and getting a million views on YouTube. At the age of 12, she was invited to appear on the Ellen DeGeneres Show in Los Angeles, and shortly after signed her very first recording contract. She's headlined her own concerts, has opened for European recording artists, One Republic, and Picture This, Gavin James and Friar Ridings. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Douglas in Cork, Ireland, now 15 years old, singer, songwriter, Ali Sherlock.
Well, thank you, Allie, and we wish you all the very best for your career. It is going to be a great career. ASME awards honorary membership for a lifetime of service to engineering or related fields such as science, research, or public service. This award signifies distinguished service that contributes significantly to the attainment of the goals of the engineering profession. Honorary membership was first awarded back in 1880, the founding year of the society. So let us meet our first honorary member, Dr. Jay Chin Han. Professor Jay Chin Han is awarded honorary membership in ASME for a lifetime of service to engineering, including contributions to industry and academia. Professor Han is well known for his pioneering studies in high temperature turbine blade cooling, greatly impacting the modern development of high efficiency gas turbines for both aircraft and land-based power generation applications. His groundbreaking work in angled rib turbulence promoters replaced earlier designs and has become a standard for advanced turbine blade cooling systems design. Dr. Hahn's fundamental study on film cooling under unsteady high free stream turbulence conditions has had a major impact on the film cooling design of turbine blades. After working in industry as an engineer, Dr. Han is currently University Distinguished Professor, Marcus Easterling Endowed Chair Professor, and Director of the Turbine Heat Transfer Laboratory at Texas A&M University. Dr. Han has published three books on heat transfer and cooling technology related to gas turbines and fluid mechanics. He's supervised 34 masters and 49 PhD students and 13 postdoctoral research associates. He's published 250 refereed journal papers, 21 articles for books, 247 refereed conference papers, and holds seven U.S. patents. For a lifetime of distinguished service to the engineering profession, ASME welcomes Professor Jay Chin Han as an honorary member. I am honored to receive this award. I joined the ASME in 1979 when I was a young engineer. I quickly found that participating in ASME activities has been very beneficial to my teaching and research career at Texas A&M and for my professional development. Over the past 40 years, I have attended many ASME-sponsored conferences, such as IMIKI, Summer Heat Transfer and Turbo Expo. In particular, I have served on the K-14 Gas Turbine Heat Transfer Committee since 1983. And at the yearly Turbo Expo conference, I have had many interactions with the attendees from industrial, academia, and government. I hope that ASME will continue to grow while helping new generation of students and engineers. I am grateful to my former graduate students who work hard on our research project and to my mentor, colleague, friend, and my family who have continuously encouraged and supported me for the past 40 years. Finally, many thanks to the ASME. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations, Dr. Ha. Now let's meet our second honorary member, Dr. Farshid Sadegi. Dr. Farshid Sadegi is awarded honorary membership at ASME for 35 years of significant contributions to mechanical engineering research, development, and teaching. Dr. Sadeki is the Cummins Distinguished Professor of the School of Mechanical Engineering at Purdue University and founder of the Mechanical Engineering Tribology Laboratory. As a recognized leader in the field of lubrication, friction, and wear of heavily loaded contacts, his work has fostered a better understanding of thermal effects in lubricated contacts and the effects of material microstructure topology to rolling contact fatigue. 
Dr. Sadecki earned his degrees in mechanical engineering at the University of Tennessee Chattanooga and his doctorate at North Carolina State University. Through the years, he's played a key role in introducing tribology in the graduate curricula and has mentored PhD and master's graduate students to successful careers. His chairmanships include the 2000 Tribology Conference of ASME and the Society of Tribologists and Lubrication Engineers, ASME's Research Committee on Tribology, and he currently serves on the ASME Tribology Division Executive Committee. For his lifetime of service to engineering and scientific research, distinguished leadership in the field of tribology, and for his dedication to higher learning, ASME welcomes Dr. Farshid Siddiqui as an honorary member. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm honored to receive this award. There are many people who have been instrumental in my success. However, I would like to mention that my membership and involvement with ASME has played a major role in my success. Having been able to attend ASME conferences and network with government and industry has had a profound effect on my ability to succeed. Therefore, I strongly recommend involvement with ASME and appreciate everything that has come to me through ASME involvement. There are many other people that I'd like to thank. I'd like to thank my wife, my kids, and most of all, my graduate students who have helped me to succeed and make my vision to come true. Thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations to you, Dr. Sadeghi. Now let's meet Dr. Masayoshi Tomazuka, tonight's third honorary member. Dr. Masayoshi Tamizuka is awarded honorary membership in ASME for a lifetime of service to engineering, including contributions to industry and academia. Dr. Tamizuka's research interests include optimal and adaptive control, digital control, signal processing, motion control, intelligent control, and control problems related to robotics, automation, vehicles, and human machine systems. He joined the faculty of the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of California, Berkeley in 1974 and currently serves as Associate Dean for Academic Affairs of the College of Engineering. His seminal contributions in the areas of adaptive control, preview control, and zero-phase control impact many current and emerging commercial technologies. Highly decorated by ASME and other professional societies, including SME, IFAC, and IEEE, Dr. Tamizuka is a Life Fellow of each. As an educator, he supervised more than 125 PhD students to completion. In testament to his dedication, he's been awarded by the AACC for his outstanding contributions to control education for blending and balancing a range of theoretical developments with applications and for mentoring many future leaders in academia and industry. A past recipient of ASME's Shoshira Honda Medal, Dr. Tamizuka's pioneering work in applying modern systems and control theory has inspired developments in automated vehicle lateral guidance. For a lifetime of distinguished service to the engineering profession, ASME welcomes Dr. Masayoshi Tamizuka as an honorary member. I'm very honored to be elected an honorary member of ASME. I became a member of ASME when I joined UC Berkeley in 1974. I'm in the field of dynamic systems and control. Having the dynamic systems and control division of ASME as my home base, I broaden my professional activities to other fields, such as manufacturing and transportation. ASME has provided me opportunities to serve in leadership positions in the field of controls. I'm honored each time I receive an award 
But I was especially honored when I received the Rufus Oldenburg Medal from ASME, the Richard Bellman Controlled Heritage Award from the American Controlled Council, and the Nathaniel Nichols Medal from the International Federation of Automatic Control. Like those awards, this honorary membership of ASME fuels me to continue to contribute to my field with my colleagues and graduate students. Thank you very much again. Thank you and congratulations, Dr. Tomazuka, and each of ASME's newest honorary members. Here now to present our final award of the evening is ASME's Executive Director and CEO, Tom Costabile. Thank you, Roy. The ASME Medal was established in 1920. It is the highest award that the society bestows, and it was created to recognize eminently distinguished engineering achievement. Previous recipients of the ASME Medal have included individuals like Igor Sikorsky, Norm Augustine, Dean Kamen, and last year's recipient, our very own, Dr. Reggie Bishan. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to present the recipient of the 2020 ASME Medal, Dr. Subra Suresh. The ASME Medal, established in 1920, is the highest award that the society can bestow and recognizes eminently distinguished engineering achievement. This year's awardee, Dr. Subra Suresh, was nominated by U.S. President Barack Obama to serve as director of the U.S. National Science Foundation, a federal agency that supports fundamental science and engineering. Prior to NSF, he served as Dean of the School of Engineering at MIT, where he received his SCD in Mechanical Engineering. Dr. Suresh followed up his tenure at NSF with an appointment as President of Carnegie Mellon University. He's authored three books, published over 300 articles, and holds 26 patents. Over the years, his research has yielded many discoveries around the underlying properties and performance of engineered and biological materials and their effects on human diseases. He has also been elected to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and the National Academy of Inventors. Dr. Suresh is currently President and Distinguished University Professor at Nanyang Technological University in Singapore, a global university founded on science and technology. A Fellow of ASME, he's been awarded 17 honorary doctorate degrees from universities spanning the globe for exceptional achievements in engineering and for his contributions to both academia and industry. ASME proudly presents the ASME Medal to Dr. Subra Suresh. I am honored and humbled to be awarded the 2020 ASME Medal. This recognition is particularly meaningful to me because ASME was the first professional society I joined as a student member about four decades ago. Many members of ASME have played an important role in shaping my career over the years. I've also been fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with extraordinarily talented students and colleagues, many of whom are members of ASME. This award also reflects their contributions to my work and to our profession. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, and congratulations, Dr. Suresh, upon receiving ASME's highest award. Well, we now come to the end of our program on behalf of President Brian Erler and the Executive Director and CEO Tom Costabile, the ASME Board of Governors, the Committee on Honors, and the ASME Foundation. I'd certainly like to congratulate each of our distinguished award recipients. Well, before we conclude tonight, I have one more story I'd like to share with you, and I'd like to share one of my very first encounters with greatness. In fact, he's known as the greatest of all time, the one and only Muhammad Ali. My first interview ever in television was interviewing Muhammad Ali. This is that picture 
1975. <laughs> Muhammad was doing a, a, a tour through a nursing home in South Beach, Florida. About 200 people in South Beach, Florida, people in their 80s and 90s and above. And one Friday night, I had my camera crew and I followed him. And he walked in this room and there's about 200 of these elderly folks and he started off with Ali. I'm the greatest, I'm the fastest, can nobody whoop me? I'm still fast, I'm still pretty, what's my name? A few of the elderly folks went, Muhammad Ali, you know, they didn't know what to say. <laughs> then Ali is feeling pretty good, you know, he just beat Joe Frazier, Thriller Manila, you know. He goes into another room. He starts, I'm the... And he sees there's no one in the room, except for one man in a wheelchair. I'll never forget this black man in a wheelchair, about 96 years old, sitting by a bay window. True story. Ali takes a knee, and he says to this old man, Hey, old man, do you know who I am? No reaction. Ali tries it again. Hey, old man, what's my name? Nothing, no reaction. Ali figured, and he was partially right, this man was so old, he could barely hear, couldn't think much anymore, couldn't speak, and it was true, he hadn't eaten several weeks, and hadn't spoken to anybody. So Ali, somewhat humbled but understanding, walks away. As he's walking away, I swear to you this, this happened. This old man took this wheelchair, and he turned it, and like a light went off in his head, he looked at him and spoke, first haltingly, but then with more conviction. Hey! Hey! What? Hey! I know who you are. Ali turned off to him. You know who I am? Old man said, Yes, I do. You're the champ of the world, man. You know, I waited my whole life to meet the champ. My heart saw with pride because I got to meet my champ. You are the greatest of all time. Can't nobody whoop you. Well, Ali, I saw this, was moved. He looked at this old man and said, in his own way, You right? I am the champ. What's my name? And the old man looked up and said, Joe Lewis. Everybody in the entourage with Ali was embarrassed and humiliated. They wanted to correct the old man. They started to correct, hey, old man, old man, don't you know who that is? Not John. And Ali stopped him. He stopped him. He said, what are you doing? Hey, but he said your name. I know he said what I, I could hear. <laughs> so you see that man over there? I'll never forget this, folks. He said, he may not be great to you, but he's good to me. And he's good because somewhere in his life he tried to put food on the table for his babies. Everybody deserves dignity. Don't ever take a man's dignity away and never take a man's dream away. His dream came true tonight. Because in his mind the only champ that mattered to him was Joe Lewis. His dream came true tonight. You know why? And then he said it. Because tonight my name is Joe Lewis. There it was. There it was in a way I would have never seen in covering sports. Muhammad Ali was telling me what it is to be a champion. A champion is not defined by wins or losses. A champion is not defined by how much money he accrues or the amount of friends he even has. A champion is defined by an ability to uplift another human being. I say to you tonight, folks, uplift somebody. Uplift somebody in your workplace, your communities every single day more than ever uplift somebody like he uplifted us and remember too the words of someone he knew very well Arthur Ashe that which we earn makes us a living and that which we give makes us a life and George Washington Carver a man who preceded him by 50 years who wrote it this way how far you all go in your life depends upon your ability to be tender with the young and compassionate with the aged and tolerant of the weak and the strong and patient with the striving. Because someday in your life you will have been all of those things. That's why we love Ali.
because he's been all of those things and he still represents humanity at its very best it's been my privilege to hear your stories and learn how your individual accomplishments have contributed to the greater good of ASME's noble mission to advance engineering for the benefit of humanity. And to each of our honorees, let me say that your extraordinary accomplishments to engineering and education and the profession have both inspired us and challenged us to set high standards for the global engineering community and for one another. Each of you have helped share in the excitement of engineering as those in your chosen profession continue to strive to make the world a better and safer place. I'm Roy Firestone, thank you for joining us and thank you ASME for allowing me to be a part of this very special evening. Stay safe, stay well, good night.